everybody already knows the amazing map, for each, reduce, and so on array methods, but there are tons of other array methods out there you've probably never even heard of and are just as useful. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering over 20 different array methods you've probably never heard of, and they're all incredibly useful. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. To get started, I wanna talk about my very favorite array method out of all the ones in this video, and that is the group by method. This is a rather new method. It's available in most browsers, except for Safari doesn't quite have support yet. And instead of calling this on an array like people.groupby, instead you actually call this on the object or the map method. So I could say object.groupby, and I pass it an array of objects. So for example, all of these different people here. And then the second parameter I pass it is going to be a function that I apply to that to determine what my grouping is gonna be. So for example, for each person, what I wanna do is I wanna group by that person's name. Now what I can do is I can turn that into a variable. We'll just say const a is equal to this. And we'll console log a, and we can see that the results of this is going to be an object where we have everything grouped by name. So you can see the keys are John, Kyle, and Sally, because those are the names of the different people we have. And then you can see if I open up John, you can see I get both the people with that same name. Same thing here with Kyle and same thing with Sally. Now, the really nice thing about this is I can do this both for maps and objects. So I could come in here and say map.groupby, and this is just going to return to me a map instead of an object. So depending on what different use case you have, but the really cool thing is you can map by anything you want. For example, instead of just mapping by name, I could map by the first letter of people's name. So instead here, I could come in here and just get the zeroth index of their name. And now if I change John to be Johnny, for example, they're technically different names. But when I save, you can see now I'm mapping for all these different things. And if I change it back to an object, it's a little bit easier to read. So we'll just do this to an object. You can see now I'm grouping by J, K, and S, that first initial. And I can group by literally anything I want. So I really love this new array method. Technically, it's not a method on arrays, but it's a method on an object or a map that specifically is for dealing with arrays of objects. Now, this is my favorite array method of the ones I'm talking about, and it's rather new. But if you want to hear about even newer array methods, make sure you stay till the end of the video because I'm going to be talking about some really experimental stuff at the end. But going back to stuff that's been in the language forever, I want to talk about some array methods you already know and then their counterpart, which you probably don't. So you probably already know the push method, which allows you to add things to the end of an array. So I just push one into this. And I just console.log people. You'll know that this gets pushed to the end of the array. Everybody knows what this method does. There's also the pop method, which you're probably familiar with as well. And this just removes the last element from the array. So if we console log A, you can see that it's giving us John, which is the last person in this array, and it's removing them from the array. But there's also the opposite to pop and push, which is shift and unshift. So if I come in here with shift, now you can see that I'm actually removing the first element from the array. And if I log out my people array, you can see it only has three elements and it's removed that Kyle element, the very first one. Unshift is just like push, but it allows me to add an element to the front of the array. If I console.log, people again, you can see that now one is added to the front of the array instead of the end of the array. So these unshift and shift methods are really great if you want to modify the beginning of the array instead of the end. Now another somewhat new array method is going to be the with method, and that essentially allows you to change the value of a specific index in the array. So what I can do here is I can say people dot with, and I can say, let's say at index one, I want to change this to the value of, let's say seven. Now, if I save, you'll notice that my array for people didn't change. It's still exactly the same, but this value for A actually did change because it returns to me a brand new value for that array. So the with method is just like if I were to use the actual bracket syntax where I said one is equal to the value of seven, that actually modifies my array for people. But by using with instead, I'm actually creating a copy. So I no longer modify my people array. So my people array stays exactly the same, which is really nice. And the great thing is I can actually use negative indexes like negative one to actually change the last element in the array to this value of seven. So width is great if you want to copy an array and change a value in it without actually mutating that array. Now, speaking of using negative indexes, something I really love is the at method. The at method works just like the bracket notation for actually getting a value, but again, it lets you use negative values for the indexes. So here I'm getting the last value from my array, which is John, or I can pass it one, I can get the second value, which is Johnny. It works exactly the same as the bracket notation you're already familiar with, but bracket notation does not let you use negative numbers while using dot at, I can actually pass in a negative number, which is really great. Now, another array method, which is really useful is the fill method. And it just allows me to replace elements in the array with a specific value. So if I say fill, one, it's going to replace every single element in that array with the value of one. And it actually mutates my array. You can see if I log out people, it actually changes my people array. 
Now, the really nice thing about this is if I don't want to overwrite everything, I can say, you know what, starting at the second index, replace everything with one. So you can see it replaces my last two elements. Or I could say, you know what, only replace the indexes between one and three. And now you can see it's only replacing my second and my third element inside of my array. This is a great way to overwrite specific elements in an array. Now, the next three methods I want to talk about, I'm going to group into one category, and that's because they all serve the exact same purpose. You're probably already familiar with, for example, the reverse method, which reverses an array, but it mutates the array. So for example, if I console log my people array, you can see that this array has actually been reduced. Kyle is now my last element, as John is my first element. Same thing if I were to use a splice, so if I come in here with splice, that's actually going to mutate my array when I make changes with it. And same thing with sort. If I do a sort, it actually mutates my array. Well, all of these array methods have a new version, which is two sorted. We have two reversed and we have two spliced and they do the exact same thing, but they do not mutate the array and instead they return a new array. So for example, if I change this to two reversed, and I just make sure I spell reversed properly, and I save this, you can now see when I log out people, it's still in the exact same order as before. But if I log out the array A, you can see that this one has now been reversed where Kyle was at the end. So this allows you to do reversing, sorting, or splicing without actually mutating the array, which is really useful, especially if you're doing functional programming or working in something like React. Now this next method I wanna talk about is also a two-part method, and that is going to be flat and flat map. So if I have a nested array, so I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna change my people array real quick, and we'll just say that I'm going to have some nested arrays like this. Or I have just a bunch of different values nested, and we'll do like an even deeper level of nesting inside of this one. There we go. So now my people away is like super nested with arrays inside of arrays inside of arrays. If I want to just change this into one single flattened array, I could use this flat method right here. Now you can see what's happened is it's taken all of my arrays and removed them, at least at one level. So as you can see, if I look at this, I have one, two, two, three, three, four, four. That arrays has been removed. So it's just removed one level of my array. And this, which is a doubly nested array, you can see it removed one level, but it kept the other level of array. If I want to flatten even further, you can actually pass into this how far you want to flatten. So by default, it flattens by one level. I could say I want to flatten by two levels, or if you want to just flatten an array entirely to all different levels, you could do number dot positive infinity, and that is going to make sure no matter how deeply nested your arrays are, it flattens it to one single array structure. Now this is very similar to the flat map function, which flattens your array and then lets you map over it. So it's exactly the same as calling dot flat dot map afterwards, but it allows you to do it in one single function call instead of doing it in two separate function calls. Otherwise it works exactly the same. Now the next two specific functions, I again want to cover all together because they have similar purposes. And that is going to be the find last as well as the re reduce but it's reduce right. And these are just kind of opposite versions of find and reduce, where instead of starting at the start of the array, it starts at the end of the array. I'm gonna create my people array here. I'm just gonna give it the values one, two, three, and I'm gonna put another value of one inside of there. So if I were to say find last, it's actually going to find the last instance of a specific value. And this method works just like find, but it starts at the end of the array. So let's actually change this to be zero instead. And I wanna find the first element that is less than two. So I can say is I have my number and I can say n is less than two. And then let's just console log out what a is. So you can see here I'm getting zero and that's because when I use find last, it's trying to start from the end of the array and find the last element in the array that meets this requirement. Well, if I use normal find, you can see it starts at the front of the array and finds the first element that matches that requirement. This is the same thing with reduce versus reduce right. Reduce starts on the left side at the start of your array and reduces downward, while reduce right starts at the end of your array and reduces in the other direction. So essentially it's the same as if you recall reverse first and then call the normal reduce or the normal find function. So depending on your use cases, these are really great methods because they save you from having to do an extra reverse inside of your array because you can just do it all in one with find last or reduce right. Now, before we jump into what I think are the coolest new array methods that are coming out, I do want to cover one that you may actually know. This is probably the most common one, and that is the array dot is array method. So for example, if I want to determine if this people array is actually an array, let's just say console.log people, well, normally you may think like type of, you want to get the type of people and check to see if it's an array, right? You can say type of people is equal to array. And if I save, you'll notice I'm getting false because this actually is an object type because pretty much everything in JavaScript is an object. So there's no good way to determine if something is an array except for by using the array.isArray method. So I can say array.isArray 
pass it in whatever my array is. And this will return true if it's an array or if it's not an array. For example, I pass in a number here. You can see it returns false. This is really great for checking if you have an array. Now, the final set of array methods I want to talk about are actually so experimental, they don't work in any browser except for Safari. And since I'm on Windows, I can't show that to you, but I can show you what they actually look like. So these are array methods that are specifically on the set object type. So technically they aren't array methods, they only work on sets, but sets are very similar to arrays. And I actually have a full video covering them. If you wanna learn more, I'll link it in the cards and description for you. But what these methods do is they allow you to do common mathematical operations on sets. For example, if you wanted to determine what elements are exclusively in one set and not the other, you could use difference to say, I wanna get only the elements in set A, but not in set B. So if you had a set of values one and two and another set with the values of two and three, and you did a difference, you would get the value of one being returned because that's the only thing unique to that first set that you have. Intersection gives you what is combined between both of them, so what they both share. So in that example, it would return two because they both share two. Symmetric difference is like the opposite of intersection, so it would return to you one and three because those are the only things they don't share between them. Union would return to you all the values between both sets, so one, two, and three. And then these last few values are really for determining if we have subsets. So is disjoint from just says they don't share anything at all. So if both of these arrays are completely unique, then it'll give us a disjoint from that'll be true. Subset means essentially all the values in A are also in B. And then superset is just saying all the values in B are also in A. So this is a great way to do all these different mathematical operations, which are surprisingly quite common in a lot of programming applications. Like I said, this is very experimental right now. It's only in Safari, but I'm super excited for these because there's certain situations where you need these. And it's a huge pain writing out the code to actually solve this problem when these methods do it all for you. And that is over 20 different amazing array methods. Let me know how many of them you actually knew down in the description below. Maybe you actually knew all of them, which is crazy and incredible. Maybe you knew none of them. Let me know which ones you knew down in the description below. And with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.